In today's video, we have the butcher's dog versus the devil dog. Where did they come from? How do their energy levels compare? Who is the better with children or small animals? Well, watch on to find out. Welcome back to the Fenrir Rottweiler Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist and I'm the founder and CEO here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything you could possibly want to know about the incredible Rottweiler, then how to become a high-level canine leader that can raise perfect Rottweiler companions. So if this is your first time, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you never miss a future Rottweiler video. So let's dive into today's video. We will compare these two insanely popular and intelligent German breeds. So let's start with their origins. And to learn about the creation of the Rottweiler first, we need to go back in time, way back in time to about 6 AD, when Roman Emperor Augustus started his conquest of Germania, which we now know as modern day Germany. Wherever the Roman legions went, there was also a demand for food. This meant totting around a large amount of fresh food and livestock to feed the entire army. To move such a large amount of animals to be used during the legion's time away from home, the empire deployed the drover dogs or cattle herding dogs. Now, antiquity's rustic droving dogs are where we get our first look at the Rottweiler's ancestors. Rome eventually gave up trying to add Germania to the empire and left for the greener, richer pastoral of Gaul, or modern-day France. But some individuals of their canine entourage were left behind. Now, it wasn't until centuries later in Rottweil, Germany, that the Rottweiler would be developed to drove and protect farms and livestock from castle rustlers. The breed became known far and wide as the Rottweiler Metzgerhund, or the Butcher's Dog of Rottweil. The breed found itself out of work in the 1800s with the rise of the railroad and cattle cars to move stock from one place to another. Though this intelligent, versatile breed quickly found itself in police work, protection work and was even used as one of the first breeds used as a guide dog for the blind. Given their similarity in fur colouring, it is no surprise the Rottweiler was one of the breeds used to create the Doberman. Now, the Doberman breed first came on the scene in early 19th century in Germany, when Louis von Doberman went on a mission to create his own dog breed. Now, Louis was a tax collector, and in those times, it was a very dangerous occupation. He would go door to door and collect tax money. As you can imagine, not many people were happy to see him, and he was always looking around a large amount of money from one place to the next as he went about his route. Mr. Doberman dreamed of an imposing breed that would be capable of protecting him on his rounds, but he also wanted something dependable that wouldn't bow out when the chips were really down. He mixed some black and tan terrier, some Rottweiler, a little sprinkle of German pincher, and some smooth-coated uh, herding dogs in the area, and lo and behold, gave the world the first canine breed specifically for personal protection. Now granted, this first rendition of the breed was not as refined or agile as what we know today, but the tax collector's dog still became known far and wide as a working dog extraordinaire. Though assisting in tax collection didn't end up being a permanent role for the Doberman as the world modernised. It had already found itself in a variety of lines of work from police work to the military, service dogs, search and rescue, and of course further protection work. So let's look at the appearance differences between these two beautiful breeds. Now, the Rottweiler is one of those breeds most people instantly recognize the second they see it. This is a medium large breed that exudes strength. They have a large frame and very defined muscles under a short black and rust coat. Their head is wider with a shorter muzzle, just backed up by powerful thick jaw muscles. The Rottweiler does naturally have a long tail, but most would know it for being docked in some parts of the world where the practice has not been banned. Females of the breed are expected to be smaller and have some more feminine characteristics, but they should not be much less substantial than their male counterparts. Now, a male Rottweiler is going to be around 24 to 27 inches tall and weighing around 95 to 135 pounds. Females are a little bit smaller at 22 to 25 inches and will come in around the similar kind of weight. Now, the Rottweiler most commonly comes in black and tan, which the breed is obviously best known for. There are other colours in the breed, though. They are not necessarily within the breed standard, which does include red and blue coloured variations of the dog breed. 
So a really common question I get is what are the differences between a German and an American line? And the answer is there are a few small differences between German and American lines of Rottweiler. The first being the ADRK or the Angle Minor Deutsche Rottweiler Club. I think is how you pronounce it. But anyway, in Germany, they have a strict no docking policy. They also accept dogs that are a little larger, while the American Kennel Club recognizes individuals who are a bit smaller in comparison and does allow docking. The ADRK is, however, very strict on the temperament of dogs it accepts. But besides the docking requirements and minor size variations, the difference in appearance is minimal and only really highlights where the dog was born, either Germany or America. Now, in comparison, the Doberman is also a breed to easily recognize. Though they are, and while they're most commonly come in the same color as the Rotti, their structure varies greatly. The Doberman has that squared frame with a compact build. It is muscular, yet agile and elegant in its appearance. The muzzle is long and in a blunt wedge shape, its eyes dark, taking on a famous almond shape. Females should be a little smaller and more feminine, especially in the face and traditionally the Doberman also sported dock tails and cropped ears. Both of these practices have become banned in many countries around the world but they are still accepted in the American Kennel Club. Now male Dobermans will usually be around 23 to 28 inches in height and weigh somewhere around 75 to 100 pounds. And on the other hand, females will usually be around 24 to 26 inches tall and around 60 to 90 pounds in weight. Now, like the Rottweiler, the most common colour for the Doberman will be that famous black and tan. But the breed does come in additional colours such as blue and rust, Isabella, red and rust, all black, white and some albinos. So what about the differences between European and American lines here? Now, there is an apparent difference between European and American Dobermans, so much so that they are two relatively easy to tell apart breeds. European dogs are going to be more muscular and robust. In comparison, dogs of the breed from American lines tend to be more slender and agile in appearance. There are significant discrepancies in temperament between the two lines, which we'll cover more in depth in a few moments. Hey guys, very quickly, I just wanted to interrupt and let you know about our boot camp program if you've never heard of it before. It's the program that as a canine behaviorist, I use every single day with all of the clients and all of the bad behavior cases that I work with to high levels of success. It is focused on teaching you how to become a high level canine leader that is able to restructure the relationship with your dog so that they see you as that leader and they know to look up to you for guidance and direction. When we achieve that, we can then finally address those bad behavior problems and get to the point of having the perfect canine companion that you've always dreamed of. So if you want more information about our bootcamp program, the link will be down in the description box below. But until then, let's get back to the video you were just watching. So what are the energy level and exercise requirements differences between the two breeds? Well, the Rottweiler's activity level is not incredibly high. They have a decent off switch. It is easier to engage with less energy expenditure, unlike a lot of other working and guarding breeds. The Rottweiler should have ample time to exercise as the dog should maintain a healthy weight and keep it lean. As puppies, this breed should be monitored carefully during playtime and exercise as they can easily damage their joints, which can have long-lasting repercussions into adulthood. Now, after a Rotti is fully mature, they need some exercise, such as a long walk to really keep them in shape and help them work off that excess energy. However, owners of this breed should be mindful since, due to the Rottweiler's dark coat, they can overheat when it is hot outside and they are doing any kind of strenuous activity. Now, the Doberman is a high activity breed. They have a lot of energy that needs to be drained to achieve a well-behaved companion. It will take more than it would with a Rottweiler to get this breed to calm down and relax. The Doberman is a much larger commitment in the exercise department, especially when you consider both breeds, American and European. A long walk will not be sufficient for this breed. This is even more true with the European lines. They are intense working dogs and need to be worked vigorously to experience a more low-key side to them and to achieve that off switch which we need in the home especially if we're having them as companion dogs an under-exercised doberman is a destructive doberman
Well, the Rotti, unfortunately, does not have a very long life expectancy. The breed tends to average eight to 10 years, and one of the oldest known Rottweilers is currently only 13 years old. The Rottweiler does also have a long list of health issues, with the most common and deadly killer of the breed being bone cancer. The Rotti also has several other cancers that run rampant in the breed. A recent study conducted by Gerald P. Murphy Cancer Association, in conjunction with the Rottweiler Health Foundation, believes that they may have uncovered a link to the breed's incredible number of cancer cases, which includes vaccination schedules and spaying or neutering too early in the dog's life. Though the breed's health problems do not stop at simply cancer, they are prone to different types of dysplasia, including hip and elbow, which affects the joints where the hip connects to the pelvis or the elbow. This can cause movement problems and potentially mobility issues. Rottweilers can also have heart or eye conditions and JLPP, which is juvenile laryngeal paralysis and polyneuropathy, which is hereditary and can cause paralysis. The Doberman's life expectancy is not really any better than the Rottweiler's. Officially, the breed will live between 10 to 12 years, but some experts are now estimating that the average is closer to 6 to 8 years of age, unfortunately. Now, the Doberman also has a seriously lousy list of health problems, and the list is only getting more and more hard to swallow, as the use of popular sires across all bloodlines has severely diluted the genetic diversity in the breed. A recent study by UC Davis Davis Genetic Labs found that the Dobermans have the lowest genetic diversity of any other breed that they have tested. The biggest concern for the Doberman breed is DCM, or dilated cardiomyopathy, which is a heart condition that results in death. It is estimated that at least 58% of individuals of this breed across Europe have the disease. And what's worse is that we still have no knowledge of what gene controls this disease and is most commonly presents after breeding age, which makes it almost impossible possible to screen for. Now, other health problems in the breed include hip and elbow dysplasia. Von Willebrand's disease is a clotting disorder that is not the same as haemophilia, but presents with the same inability for an open wound to properly clot. Wobbler's disease, which is caused by an issue in the neck and spinal vertebrae, this causes uneven gait and mobility issues. 50% of cases of Wobbler's disease across all dog breeds are found in the Doberman alone. So what are the social needs between the Doberman and the Rottweiler? Well, the owners of the Rottweiler already know this dog is part goofball and part warrior. This breed has a heart as big as its body, and its people take up most of that space. Rottweilers love to be with their family and are always up for a good cuddle on the couch. They might even try to situate themselves right on top of your lap, though they can be somewhat aloof towards strangers and even hostile to those that may be deemed to have bad intentions, which is why socialization is so important. Now, the Doberman also loves its people and it takes the term Velcro dog to the next level. They want nothing more than to be with their people and Dobermans are known to be so in tuned and attached with their people that they will even pick up on stress or arguments in the household and something like an argument between spouses can make them physically nauseous. All of these things make the Doberman a terrible choice to spend a lot of time alone or be resigned to being an outside dog. So let's look at the temperament differences and as we go forward with the rest of this video it will be with the assumption that the dog has been given proper socialization and training from a young age. It will also be assumed that the dog is of correct temperament and disposition for its breed. So without that said let's look at what temperament will look like with those things considered. A Rottweiler is a loyal breed. They love their family, but a confident and courageous guardian when called upon. Rotties are level-headed. They should never be overly aggressive without provocation and can be reserved around people that they do not know. This breed keeps a keen eye on its surroundings and is ever the watchful guard dog. At the same time, they do tend to come on strong as they are assertive, though it should be recognized that aggression can come naturally to this breed. It takes a high level canine leader to see the signs and act appropriately to curb this kind of behavior. While the temperament can vary slightly between American and European lines, the Doberman overall is loyal, fearless, alert, and incredibly intelligent. They are not a breed to try any funny business with. As they are strong physically and have a high mental fortitude, they can also be standoffish with strangers. And if anyone tries anything with their family, they will see up close and personal why this breed has been nicknamed the devil dog.
Now, as for the variety of types, the American lines then tend to have that more gentle disposition and have less of that working dog mentality 24-7. In contrast, the European lines want nothing more than to work all the time. They can be a little more intense, braver, and have higher stamina. So let's dive into the intelligence and trainability differences between these two breeds. Now, despite what some may think, the Rottweiler is an incredibly intelligent breed. They can be somewhat stubborn and are independent thinkers who need a good leader to show them why something is a good idea and why they should be interested in doing, in doing versus what they think they should be doing. The Rotty claims the number nine spot on the list for the most intelligent dog breeds. This study examined how often a breed needed to be exposed to a command before it learnt it, and then how often it could execute on that command moving forward. So in the right hands, a Rottweiler is a highly trainable breed. With more advanced training, they can be used for a variety of different roles, including things like police work, military work, service dogs, search and rescue, Schutzhund, and other competitive canine sports. A more novice canine leader might have a hard time getting around the Rottweiler's more stubborn streak, which can lead to certain frustrations. The Doberman is another highly intelligent dog. On the breed ranking list for most intelligent dog breeds, it comes in at number five. The Doberman does have some serious brain power, and it comes at no surprise that this breed can and will outsmart an unsuspecting owner. Though this breed wants to please its people and is highly biddable, which makes for a somewhat easier training process than the Rottweiler. They want to make their owners happy and are willing to do whatever you ask of them in an attempt to do so. The Doberman is incredibly versatile and finds itself in a variety of canine competitive sports and police and military work, home protection, service dogs, search and rescue and many more. So I hope you enjoyed today's video guys. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and get involved down in the comment section below. If you are new here, you've got to remember to subscribe and turn on the notification bells because that's how you'll never miss a future Rottweiler video. And we have two here coming to this channel every single week. So I can't wait to see you on the next episode of the Fenrir Rottweiler Show.